The Land Rover Defender is one of those iconic cars that almost everyone recognises. It's hardly changed, visually at least, in over half a century, though under the skin this is actually far more of a high-tech vehicle than you might expect. Its status as one of the world's ultimate 4x4 go-anywhere workhorses remains, however, further enhanced by the introduction of a more powerful 2.4-litre, 122-brake horsepower diesel engine. Once upon a time, back in 1947, there was a man called Morris Wilkes. By day, he was chief designer for the Rover Car Company. By night and weekend, he was an enthusiastic farmer at his small holding near Anglesey, aided by an old war surplus Willys Jeep. When one day the Jeep spluttered to a halt, Morris had a problem. Spare parts were impossible to get, as were replacement vehicles. Now secretly, Wilkes was rather pleased. He'd always rather fancied the chance to design something better. He did, and over 60 years and 1.5 million vehicles later, as you can see, it's still going strong. First known simply as the Land Rover, this vehicle was first launched at the 1948 Amsterdam Motor Show as something much more than a motor vehicle. True, it could be used as a car, but it was also designed for use as, as anything from a, a power source to a small tractor, the ultimate Swiss army knife of farming equipment. Now over the years, um, ownership of the Land Rover brand came and went, but this iconic vehicle remained much the same, gaining coil springs and a slightly longer wheelbase in 1984, and the Defender name to differentiate itself from some of the uh, brand's other products as the century drew to its close. What we're looking at here is a last historic throw of the dice from the Solihull brand. This car can climb many obstacles, but the biggest of all, the legislator's pen, may ultimately defeat it without changes so extreme as to render it an unrecognisable cousin to the car that started life on Morris Wilkes's farm. But before all that happens, we can all still enjoy one, even if we don't have our own farm or live halfway up Ben Nevis. Thanks for this is due to a package of changes that arrived for the 2007 model year. A new 2.4 litre Ford Transit derived diesel engine uh, replaced the wheezy old TD5 to keep the emissions lobbyists at bay, uh, bringing with it a new six-speed gearbox and the excuse to tinker with both steering and suspension while upgrading the interior. Pretty much everything in fact was changed, but nothing was different. Thank goodness for that. At last, a driving experience that really is that, a driving experience. It won't suit everyone, of course. If it did, Land Rover would have no need to offer Freelanders, Discoveries and Range Rovers. Uh, an acquired taste then, and the Defender's loyal following would have it no other way. You sit high up and uh, you bang your elbows on the, on the doors until you get used to twirling the large steering wheel. The six-speed gearbox, well, it's still a little bit notchy. The suspension's very firm and uh, the uh, turning circle is pretty large, so you'll think twice about tuckling tight multi-storey car parks. All of which will irritate if, rather unreasonably, you expect this vehicle to be some kind of stripped out discovery. Approach it looking for something a little different and the irritating faults become endearing foibles. You almost uh, wish for a storm to blow up on the way to the Chinese takeaway or uh, for signs to tell of flash flooding on the school run. For here, of course, your Defender will come into its own. On the other 350 days of the year, it'll uh, keep up with traffic on road and uh, it'll get you where you want to go as you wave cheerfully to other Defender owners um, as part of an almost secret society that seems to be entitled by ownership. The 2.4 litre engine lends itself well to off-road adventures with a much healthier 260 newton metres of torque that gets you smartly off the line, is crucially accessible low down in the rev range and ticks over happily whether you're edging through water, slithering down slippery slopes or fulfilling the Defender's enormous 3,500 kilogram potential towing capacity. When you're off the rough stuff, motorway cruising is improved but still noisy and maximum speed is limited, perhaps wisely, to a modest 85 miles an hour. 
What more do you want from a vehicle that will tackle a, a 45 degree slope going forwards or backwards? A car that will wade through water over half a metre deep or traverse a, a 35 degree hill? Now there aren't many 4x4s that could potentially call themselves rivals and even those that are, say Jeep's Wrangler, lag way behind when it comes to the extreme rough stuff. Take the Defender's astounding 47 degree approach and departure angles. Uh, the Jeep manages just 38 and 32 degrees respectively and it calls itself unstoppable. Is there a more iconic shape in British motoring than this one? I doubt it. This is a national treasure, a statement of Britishness that you'll find used by aid agencies, mountain explorers and adventurers the world over. Now visually little has changed over the years, though this version has a raised bonnet to incorporate that larger 2.4 litre diesel engine. You've still got the same simple, easy to repair flat aluminium panels bolted to a tough steel ladder frame chassis. You can even see the rivets. There are some anomalies though. There's an iPod socket, but uh, no electric mirrors and not a single airbag. Traction control and ABS are standard on plusher models, but you still can't have height adjustment for either the seat or the steering wheel. Engineering priorities, I suppose. Climb inside, and it's still refreshingly utilitarian. Though much smarter than old Defender models, thanks to instruments borrowed from the Discovery, and a one-piece dashboard and fascia that eliminates a lot of the squeaks and rattles that you used to get. Now in older and tougher times, uh, air conditioning used to be supplied by a flap at the front, freezing your hands on the steering wheel in winter. And though that was improved in more recent years, it wasn't by much. Before 2007, this car didn't even have side window demist events. Now today, the air conditioning that you get in plusher models uh, cools the cabin twice as fast, and the heater uh, heats it up twice as quickly too. Depending on which of the two body styles you choose, up to seven seats can be specified, with the third row these days conventionally forward facing. Now, uh, that's in the 110 long wheelbase model. I'm in the 90 short wheelbase version here that has just two seats in the back uh, that are also forward facing. Now, legroom is in fairly short supply back here, and these seats ignore the current trend for sliding folding or reclining, but such is the boxy, airy interior that you don't really notice it too much, and they fold away neatly to reveal a vast boot. Now defenders aren't cheap, so it's just as well that they'll hold their value as well as they'll hold the road on a steep, muddy track. You're looking at paying between 22 and 23 and a half thousand pounds for the three-door, four-seater, short wheelbase 90 station wagon model that we've got here, and between 24 and 26 thousand pounds for the five-door, long wheelbase 110 station wagon with uh, with seven seats. Uh, bear in mind, though, that that's just for the basic variants, and there are all kinds of bodywork permutations depending on whether the vehicle is being intended for business or leisure use. Now, with the demise of basic Toyota Land Cruiser and Nissan Patrol variants in the UK, rivals are virtually non-existent, unless you count the slightly less capable Jeep Wrangler, which would save you around £3,000 model for model. The Defender offers between two and seven forward-facing seats, depending on the model that you choose. Now, most are bought either as the uh, three-door 90 here, or uh, as five-door, seven-seat, 110 station wagons with county versions offering slightly plusher trim with niceties like a CD player, electric windows and remote central locking. There are all kinds of other body shapes though, short and long wheelbase uh, double cab pickups, uh, a hardtop van, even a trendy short wheelbase SVX version with all kinds of other options available through Land Rover's special vehicle operations team. Examples of these include ambulances, airport fire tenders, even uh, mobile hydraulic platforms. The 2.4 litre diesel engine is also more economical than the old TD5, especially at motorway speeds where the sixth 
gear in the manual gearbox also plays its part in making a gallon of fuel go further. You can expect uh, 25 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle from the 110 models and 28 miles to the gallon from the 90 variants. Um, CO2 emissions vary between 266 and 291 grams per kilometer and insurance is group 12. Despite the Defender's recent refurb, it remains as solid and uncompromising as it's always been with off-road ability to worry a Challenger tank. Now approach it as an alternative to modern family 4x4s and you've rather missed the point by a discovery for that. Here instead is the hardest wearing, most capable and most cost effective proper off-roader that sensible money can buy. Equipped with the beefier 2.4 litre diesel engine, this is the go-to choice if you're looking for something that will keep going when other 4x4s have ground to a sorry halt. It's still the toughest thing out there.